It started innocently enough, like most things do. I was lounging on my bed, the familiar scent of lavender from my diffuser filling the room, scrolling through Snapchat. The soft glow from my phone screen illuminated my face in the dim light. It was just another ordinary evening, or so I thought. A notification popped up. User Dark Soul has added you. I frowned. I didn't recognize the username. Maybe it was a friend from school using a different handle. I shrugged and accepted the request, thinking nothing of it. As the evening wore on, I noticed Dark Soul had sent me a snap. Curiosity peaked, I opened it. The image was dark and grainy, but I could make out a dimly lit room, empty except for a single chair in the center. No message, no context, just the chair. A chill ran down my spine, but I shook it off. Probably just some weird prank, I muttered to myself. I sent a snap back, a picture of my ceiling with a questioning emoji. Almost immediately, another snap came through. This time, it was a photo of my street, taken from the end of the block. The familiar sight of my neighborhood at night, with the street lights casting eerie shadows, filled me with a growing sense of dread. My hands grew clammy, and the lavender scent seemed to turn sour in the back of my throat. I quickly locked my phone and tossed it aside, my heart pounding. My bedroom, once a haven, now felt like a trap. The walls seemed to close in on me, the darkness outside my window pressing against the glass. After a few minutes of trying to calm myself down, I picked up my phone again. Maybe it was a coincidence. Maybe someone was just messing with me. I checked my snap map and my blood ran cold. There, just a few houses down, was Dark Souls Bitmoji. I felt nauseous. My location settings were on. They knew exactly where I was. The logical part of my brain screamed at me to turn off the location services, but fear had paralyzed me. My phone buzzed again. Another snap. With trembling hands, I opened it. This time, it was a photo of my house taken from the driveway. The caption read, I'm closer than you think. My breath hitched and I could smell the acrid stench of my own sweat. I jumped out of bed and ran to the window, peering through the blinds. The street was empty, silent except for the faint rustle of leaves in the breeze. The sense of being watched was overwhelming, a physical weight pressing down on my shoulders. Another snap notification. I nearly dropped my phone in my haste to open it. The image was a close-up of my front door. The caption, let me in. I stumbled backward, the phone slipping from my grasp and clattering to the floor. Panic surged through me, and I could hear my heartbeat thundering in my ears. The familiar lavender scent was now sickeningly sweet, cloying and oppressive. Desperation gave me the strength to act. I grabbed my phone and turned off the location services, then blocked and reported Dark Soul. But the damage was done. They knew where I lived. They had been at my door. I called the police my voice shaking as I explained the situation. They promised to send someone over to check things out, but the waiting was unbearable. Every creak of the house, every gust of wind outside, felt like a prelude to something terrible. When the police finally arrived, they found nothing. No sign of anyone having been near my house. They assured me it was probably a prank. Some kid with too much time on their hands. I barely slept that night, the scent of lavender now a constant reminder of my terror. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the snaps, the chair, my street, my house, my door. Days turned into weeks, and while the fear subsided, it never truly went away. I stopped using Snapchat, unable to shake the association with that night. But the memory lingered, a dark shadow on the edge of my mind. One evening, as I was sitting in my room, the faint scent of lavender in the air, my phone buzzed with a new notification. My blood turned to ice as I saw the message, you can't hide forever. I looked at the sender's name, Dark Soul. They were back. Fear gripped me again as I turned off my phone and bolted out of my room. The house felt like a labyrinth, each shadow a potential hiding place for my stalker. The scent of lavender followed me, 
a sickening reminder of the danger I was in. I called the police again, but as I waited for their arrival, a feeling of hopelessness washed over me. I could smell the fear, taste the panic. I knew this nightmare was far from over. The police found no evidence of a break-in or anyone lurking outside, but I knew better. I could feel it in my bones. My phantom follower was still out there, watching, waiting, and as long as they were, I would never truly be safe. The terror had become a part of my life, an uninvited guest that I couldn't escape. 